Hello everybody, welcome back to the channel. Today we have another team builder for you. Uh, today we are starring our two, our co-captains, Sia the Espathra and Ataxia the Flamingo. Flamingo, Flamingo. The thing that looks like a golf garden flamingo prop thing. So yeah, those two will be our team captains. Before we begin uh, this set, this team builder for this set, uh, feel free to like and subscribe and all that fun stuff and follow the links down below. You get access to playlists and communities and whatnot in there as well. So let's begin, shall we? So first up, ladies first, uh, our first team captain is Sia, the Espathra, uh, running her signature Calm Mind Store Power Dazzling Gleam Protect set. Um, as uh, you all know, um, this set is very uh, was very famous at the beginning of the meta with the Shed Tail Orthworm or Shed Tail Cyclozar, but specifically Orthworm for a slower Shed Tail. And then this thing gets Protect, so if you hide behind a sub, you can take one hit, you Protect, you get Speed Boost, and then you get another Speed Boost, you can Calm Mine, and the whole goal is to boost your stats to essentially boost the power of Stored Power and you'll be hitting with these boosts as well. So I believe in those first two turns alone, that's 20, 40, 60, 80. So 80 because 20 times four. Uh, effectively after one Calm Mind and two Speed Boosts, you're hitting at a 100 base powered Psychic move at 100% accuracy. So that's why it was so scary to face off with. And then to cover its Dark Weakness, because Psychic types can hit Dark types, you have Berry coverage and Dazzling Gleam and you can even Terra Fairy defensively to get even more stab on this Dazzling Gleam here. And you'll just hit really really hard and of course as your speed keeps boosting, your stored power keeps boosting, the more bulk you're gaining with Calm Mind, um, you know, you're going to take a lot of hits better because the Spathor isn't the bulkiest thing in 60 and 60 defense and spadef but it hits very hard at that 101 so that's the one you want to watch out for and of course once it gets up to speed and it's nearly boosted all the way up it's going to be nigh unstoppable so Spather here is going to be uh, hopefully we can get a late game sweep maybe uh, hopefully this thing can come in handy for us next up the other co-captain probably our lead most likely in these cases is Ataxia the Flamigo running great for close combat U-turn and throat shot now this is our a designated physical attacker. We're running the Scrappy. This thing used to be a Medicine RU. It is an NU as of this recording with uh, Teal Mask Indigo Teal Mask Indigo Disc DLC. This thing used to be an RU and it was just a Scarlet Violet meta, but uh, now it's here. We're going to run it. Um, Choice Band Scrappy. I think this is like the usual move set it runs. Uh, throw Chop is for um, Psychic coverage and Ghost coverage. Of course, we can always hit ghost types because of this Scrappy. We don't have to worry about Intimidate because Scrappy also blocks Intimidate. So we're just going to be hitting things hard at a plus one. This thing has a base 115 attack, so that times 1.5 is going to hurt a lot, I reckon. So a very, very close combat, very spammable moves. U-turn to get out of there, that's probably what we're going to do first. I'm going to send this thing out first, and then probably just U-turn out just to scout it out. Um, Throat Chop again for Ghost and Psychic coverage. And Terra Fighting simply because of uh, the two options. I think that Close Combat, we can at least reduce the damage of Stealth Rocks if we have to switch in. But then Close Combat on the Nuke button with Terra Fighting is just going to hurt a lot. Also, we don't have to worry about how many times we can use the move effectively because Brave Bird gives us recoil. Flamigo doesn't have much defense anyway, so close combat, lowering the defenses wouldn't matter. It's just a better, uh, more reliable spamming move. Next, for our defensive wall is Bronchitis the Weezing. He's back. Uh, Terra Poison with the Levitate, with will o -Wisp, Pain Split Sludge, Bomb Flamethrower, with Black Sludge. Um, as you've seen in the BDSP, I think, if I remember correctly, this like, managed to block a trick. So hopefully that will work here in the, in the Scarlet Violet meta. Uh, same is exactly the same spread as the reason we ran uh, Sludge Bomb over Sludge Wave because of the higher chance of poison. Of course, though, we always will be aiming for those burns though, and Weezing can take a lot of hits because that 120 defense. And because we have the slower pain split, we're always going to take a hit and then get the max recovery as much as we can. So hopefully this thing can do well. Um, it can take on Gliscor simply because of Will-O-Wisp if we can stop that. Um, 
what you call it, the poison heal with the toxic orb getting up, we can uh, sim we can do a lot of damage to it. So hopefully uh, this thing will be a reliable Gliscor and Landorus combo. Our special defensive wall is Freon, the Lantern, our shiny Lantern, male Lantern Freon here, running Thunderbolt, Scald, Ice Beam for our Bolt Beam coverage and Bolt Switch. It's purely Spadef, because Lantern is very, very tanky, underratedly tanky, tanky, tanky. Uh, with Bolt Absorb here, because we're going to Terra Water, Water is better defensively. Uh, and then uh, we eliminate a weakness with Bolt Absorb, so we just have to watch out for Grass, which we can hit with the Ice Beam. So this also gets rid of electric immunity. This gives electric immunity, which we have both in magnitude, which we'll see later, which will help attack Sia. Hopefully do a lot of damage, and then Sia will sweep. Uh, so yeah, don't sleep on lantern, folks. Next are kind of our in case we need it strategy. This is Yuhaba, the King Gambit, with Swords Dance, Iron Head, Cut, Kotal Cleave, and Sucker Punch. Uh, essentially, I mean, if you don't know the power of it by now, Supreme Overlord, 10% is essentially a free muscle band. I think Life Orb's 30, so it's a free, like, muscle band of sorts for her ally that faints. So King Gambit is the last one standing, and we switch it in. It's essentially a free choice band, and then Swords of that um, to get at plus 2, so we're essentially hitting at plus 3 right off the gate. And King Gambit hits really hard at 135 uh, base attack, so... Nothing to sneeze at there, although its speed is middling there. We're going with the defensive flying option to block fighting types. So hopefully we can eat a fighting hit and then counter with a really hard iron head or um, hit with a Kotal and then knock out with Sucker Punch. So hopefully that's a thing. Uh, hopefully this set, uh, this set was, I don't run King Gambits a lot, so I just kind of took what was on Smoke Gun for this one admittedly. Uh, but we'll see how well this does. I haven't practice much with King Gambit, but I know it's really popular, so I want to see the power for myself. Last but not least, is back. We have Magnitude, the Landorus, kind of a more defensive Landorus here. A Stealth Rock, Taunt, Earthquake, U-Turn, most common moves that you see, running Stealth Rock to get our rocks up. This is usually like the setter, Taunt to block other rockers, EQ for big damage, and U-Turn to get the hell out of there. And uh, Water, of course, so we can be defensive towards uh, ice types and then uh, electric types and grass types are our weakness but good thing we can hit electric types with earthquake with tons of coverage for grass types so landers is pretty much here to kind of also be a chipper as well so hopefully we can chip people down with it this team is um, essentially the aim is to kind of grind you down and then hit you with the big hitters so Yuha, Ataxia, and Sia here Sia it will be strictly for the end unless it's a really good scenario we can send it first and maybe get a 6-0 sweep, uh, early going sweep going. But yeah, the key is to just grind you down and when we get the big hits, it's supposed to do something. And then grind you down, get the big hits. So that's what we're going to do with this team. So with that being said, let me go to the Pokey case here. Hopefully it's a Pokey case. Da, 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 da. And there it is in a nice column format for you all. Ooh, why is it a bit off there? Right. If I did that, then, nope, that doesn't work. Okay, well, here it is. We have Sia, Ataxia, Bronchitis, Freon, Yuhaba, and Magnitude here. This is your team for this week. Wish us luck. Uh, admittedly, in testing, this team had to be redone at least twice. So, uh, in that regard, uh, I think uh, just to put into perspective what we had before. Um, all right, I don't actually remember what we had before actually at this point. But um, we had a hard time setting up. Uh, Flamigo did a lot of damage. Um, Espather was a choice specs Espather, so we changed this to the leftovers set here. And then um, these four members were switched out with somebody else, or these four were switched in for somebody else. So this team is completely redone, rebuilt up from the ground up. The only difference is Flamigo's, uh, the only similarities rather, is the choice man Flamigo here. So yeah, with that being said, wish us luck this week, and uh, yeah, I'll see you all next time in the Battle 1. Until then, bye bye.